Welcome back to Orlando, Florida, Camping World Bowl Stadium. Uh, what a game for the Wildcats. They come out on top 28-19 to to win the inaugural Pop-Tarts Bowl over NC State. Got off to a fast start for the Cats, scored on the first drive of the game. They were up 21-10 to at halftime. And at that point, you start thinking, oh, maybe this is going to be comfortable. No, that third quarter was a grind. K-State didn't score. Then when they got to the fourth quarter, it seemed like they had scored. A flag brought it back. Then it seemed like they scored again. Another flag brought it back. And then finally, a flag that worked to their advantage. A uh, pass interference call kept the drive alive, and Avery Johnson found Jace Brown in the end zone. It is all what ended up being a three-touchdown night in total for Avery Johnson. Two through the air, one on the ground. He is the main story when it comes to K-State football right now. So let's just start there. What is the takeaway from Avery Johnson's first career start at quarterback? Well, first, I will say, although he did get the Pop-Tarts Bull MVP, I'm going to say it probably should have been DJ Giddens. I understand giving it to Avery, though. I thought he played poised and was, you know, under a lot of pressure. If you think about the stakes of this game, the expectations that are being heaped on to him at a very rapid rate and early time. And we talked about this before. The kid just doesn't get rattled. He, you know, nothing really shakes him. And you saw that tonight in the Pop-Tarts Bowl because even when things weren't going good, you know, he just kind of went with the flow and just kind of waited for that thing to bust through, and it eventually did. So I, I thought he played controlled, if anything. Um, I had, had a couple really, you know, splashy plays. Both of his touchdown passes, I believe, just had two touchdowns and passes. They were checks at the line of scrimmage. Um, that That's really – impressive for a true freshman in his first start and then you had you know the really fantastic touchdown run as well so you still have the flashes and the splashes but at the end of the day he just took what the defense gave him I mean you look at a stat line it's like well he's only 14 to 31 there's probably three or four drops in there yeah. there's probably six or seven throwaways because he played smart a lot of freshmen and young players, they like to force the situation. He didn't. He knew when to th throw it away, and when he didn't, the only knock would be like some of those when he's throwing on the run and rolling out of the pocket a few times with wide open guys and just not getting enough on it. So you, it's probably more technique footwork stuff than anything. That's probably the only thing I could really pick apart from his performance. I just thought he was controlled, played smart, took what the defense gave him, and it was – you know, we talked about this in the lead-up. It was critical for them to not turn it over, and Avery was a big part of that. All right, let's talk about the next man up on offense, maybe the, the first, depending on how you look at it, uh, in terms of his success tonight, DJ Giddens. Y you could tell that an offensive line coach was calling the game because he wanted to pound it with DJ Giddens. He ends up going over 30 carries. Uh, he racks – or near 30 carries. He, he racks up over 150 yards on the ground. He was good early and made plays not just on the ground but also through the air with the touchdown. Uh, what did you think of DJ Giddens' play? I thought he ran hard. I th you know, I don't want to take it for granted because what he does is really good, but that's the DJ Giddens we get like every game. Like that dude's a bruiser, physical, runs with good pad level. He's mean. <laughs> he's nasty. If you talk to him before or after a game, you wouldn't know it because he's just a quiet, gentle giant. During the game, he runs pissed off, man. He, he looks for someone to run over. I've said it time and time before. I don't think it's quite to the level of what this guy could have done, but – He's kind of showing us what Mike McCoy could have been in a, in a Kansas State uniform. Um, McCoy might have even been more special. But D.J. Giddens, really good, really good football player. I'm not so sure he might have an NFL career at this point. Um, not, not tomorrow or anything like that, but I, I think he could be a Sunday football player. He's that good. Uh, you mentioned the way Connor Riley called the game. I would agree, but I thought there was actually quite a bit of balance. Uh, D.J. Giddens almost 30 carries. I think LaJane's White had a carrier too and, and Avery had some carries of his own not a lot of design runs I think they wanted to keep him healthy as they knew he was probably the only quarterback available but Avery threw it 31 times it would have been more than that because he had a scramble probably five or six times of his own I, I bet Kansas State called almost 40 pass plays and I don't know that people were probably expecting that from an offensive line coach so I thought sands the third quarter yeah. Connor Riley called a good game all right, that's what I was going to ask you because, yeah, that third quarter was tough, but 
Connor Riley, the rest of the game, it did seem like he had it working. What is the diagnosis then for K-State's offensive coordinator position? Is it 100% Connor Riley's job, and are you satisfied if that's the outcome based on what you saw tonight in Orlando? I think it was probably almost 100% his job even before tonight. If, if you put me up to a lie detector test, that's what I would say. At the end of the day, I think it is his job. I thought he was a really, really good offense coordinator for three quarters tonight. I thought that's probably a result that he was probably a really good offensive coordinator in the three, four weeks leading up to this game. And though he did run into a hurdle and hit a wall in that third quarter, and I think some of it was becoming too predictable on early downs, he at least adjusted and learned from that because then he did start to throw a little bit on first down moving forward. I think there was a strike to Jace Brown on first down, um, for example, on a specific on a specific play. So at the end of the day, <laughs> am I satisfied? I don't know if it's enough of a sample size, but I think I'm satisfied with that performance. Because I remember, you know, telling K Shooter Score fan, he was next to me, especially at halftime. I was like, it kind of feels like just the type of game that that Colin Klein would have called. Yeah. It didn't really feel that much different. And if there was difference, it was some of the route combinations I thought were a little different, and there was less QB run, which I think is what Avery wants. Yeah. All right, let's flip to the defensive side of the ball. Joe Klanderman, his unit, the last time out rough go of things against Iowa State. Nice. Yeah, and they had some moments in this game that were equally as rough, but they settled in. They forced a turnover on their way to winning the turnover battle, which Cole Manbeck tweeted out after the game that this is the first time all year that NC State has lost the turnover battle in a game, so that is significant, not just for the defense forcing the one pick with Jacob Parrish, but also the fact that Avery Johnson didn't turn it over. Casey Concepcion was held in check. He really was not an impactful player in this game. Uh, what's the, the final takeaway from this K-State defense that it had some ups and downs all season long? Probably some ups and downs in this game as well. I thought, there. I mean, especially giving up that score, I think it was just a field goal at the end of the half to make it tw – no, did they miss that field goal? They they missed a field goal. I believe in this. it was the start of the second half. Maybe their second drive of the second half they missed the field goal because K-State didn't go for it. And then NC State kicked a field goal, and it did not work out. Yeah, but NC State kicked a field goal and made it at the end of the first yes. first half after what we thought was the final score of the half was Kansas State on the Avery Johnson run. So that wasn't a bright moment. I thought, in general, I thought the defense was kind of rough in that first half. I don't think there was a bunch of drives, but you have the touchdown, the field goal, and if it wasn't for a fourth down stop, there's another score right there. And I think they settled for a field goal because they dropped the touchdown yeah. at the goal line. So um, dodged a few bullets there. Not a great first half performance. Did settle in the second half, like you said. Took away the QB run for the most part. Got beat over the top twice, I believe, on some downfield throws. But, but to be honest, when that offense, when the Kansas State offense stalled in that third quarter, the bigger issue I thought that helped them in any way is that's when the defense stiffened. Um, I mean, that was a big lull there offensively for Kansas State in the third quarter. I think it leaked into the fourth quarter a little bit. But that, and during that time, the defense held their own. They were fighting off a 21-13 lead, a 21-19 lead, three or four different times. So at the end of the day, their performance in the second half to hold off NC State when NC State was holding Kansas State down might have won them the game. Yep. So everybody stepped up when they were needed, and that leads to a K-State victory in the Pop-Tarts Bowl. Back-to-back -back nine win seasons for the first time since 2011 and 2012 for K-State. And probably even more optimism after how this game went tonight moving forward into next year, and we'll see what that looks like, obviously, with Avery Johnson at quarterback. And I know, I know they didn't have Peyton Wilson, but people need to remember, and I know it's the ACC's kind of, what, they're 4-4, four and 4-5 four and four and five bowl games now, I believe. Um I, I felt like that was one of the better teams Kansas State played this year, I thought. Um, I, 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 and against that defense, that NC State defense might have been one of the faster defenses that I remember watching Kansas State play against, which kind of says something because Avery, Avery Johnson was still out outrunning them at times. So uh, I think if, you, what, if Kansas State does what they did tonight for much of next season, I think there's a lot of wins to be had because – 
what, aside from Iowa State and maybe Oklahoma State, depending on what they have, I don't know that they're going to see a defense like that. Utah, but they don't play Utah, so. We'll see how it goes, but a good win for K-State, Chris Kleiman, Avery Johnson, and all the seniors that depart after this being their final game as well. So for Derek Young, I am Mason Voth. Thank you for watching and listening to K-State Online. Yes, Pop-Tarts Bowl, what a bowl game. Uh, definitely lived up to the hype and was uh, an awesome experience. And all the Pop-Tarts Bowl coverage will continue on over at kstateonline.com. So head over to On3, get it checked out, and uh, – you know, basketball season get, gets into real action uh, a little over a week from now. Conference play getting ready to start next Saturday in Manhattan against UCF. And the next game is January 2nd against Chicago State. I think it's the last day that the transfer portal window is open as well. Uh-oh. Avery Johnson seemed like a guy based on what he said and how the mood was that he's going to be at Kansas State next year. Yeah, he said he can't, he, he's so glad that he picked Kansas State so looking forward to continue with the brotherhood that he said doesn't exist in a lot of other places. Um, talked about growing with Connor Riley, so I think he's under the impression that's his offensive coordinator. Uh, Jace Brown even said he can't wait to keep work, go back to work with them. Will there be another transfer portal entry between now and January 2nd? It could, but it, it, it feels like it might be done. That's good news. All right. Take that, Duke. Your brotherhood has nothing on K-State's football brotherhood, according to Avery Johnson. Oh, speaking of Duke, Pop-Tarts Bowl people hating on Duke's Mayo Bowl a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Duke's Mayo Bowl took a stray uh, in the post-game ceremonies. What a wild bowl game. This is what bowl games were supposed to be about, and uh, K-State made the most of it with the win and a lot of fun down here in Orlando. So, for Derek Young, I'm Mason Both. We'll see you next time on K-State Online.